So, so okay. So the next uh, set of seven questions that will compile it, a lot of them uh, pertain to definition of momentum and impulse. So we will just <laughs> use that to answer this question. So let me just uh, write a couple of things that will I suspect will be referring to for all seven questions. So let me write them down. First is the definition of momentum. So unlike with the three month with the energy, with the momentum, we start by defining momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. The vector, uh, now this will get modified if you take physics 4C in special relativity, but um, as far as until you do special relativity, this is the definition of momentum. You can take that promise to the bank. Uh, and we also have another quantity, uh, which we call impulse. You will sometimes see letter J used for impulse. I never got used to it, so I'll just write the odd impulse, which is defined as a force times the duration of time that, uh, that, that the force is acting. So we talk about impulse due to a force. And impulse has a physical meaning. Um, so impulse is if you imagine uh, only that force, only this force acting on an object, then impulse due to that force will give you change of momentum. So, um, and yeah, so, so, so we'll be probably be referring to this definition. So let me write them down once so that I don't have to do it seven times. So let me so look at the questions and answer them. I have this set aside, set up so that I can plug in numbers fairly easily. Okay, a car of some mass is moving with a constant velocity this due east. Um, okay, um, <laughs> just doodle a little bit so that I uh, have some picture in mind for that. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna say this is my east to north and some car is moving with some velocity due east. Uh, what is the momentum of the car? Choose the coordinates, yeah. That's how I've instinctively done it. We're responsible for the numerical result, the direction, and the units. All right. Um, numerical result is easy. You just use the de definition, mass, 2175 times uh, the velocity, 11. Um, and uh, you just to make sure you plug everything in basic SI unit, kilogram, which is a basic SI unit, not gram, <laughs> and meters per second. So that should be it, 23925. In the basic SI units, uh, oh wait, that's direction. Um, so for momentum, we are multiplying kilogram with the meters per second. So we should have kilogram times meters per second. Yeah, that's it. Uh, in, the, uh, in the, so yeah, Y is north. Um, Okay, there's a bit of an ambiguity. Uh, um, sorry, I'm just trying to be difficult. Uh, see if <laughs> choosing this, if we can still somehow uh, make, yeah, I think it's ambiguous because why being north doesn't necessarily mean your x is east because uh, your upward could be your x direction and east could be your minus t. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I mean, um, let me keep going. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, what is the average momentum of uh, 67 kilograms printer who runs the 100 meter dash in 10.3 seconds? Um, so I think I'm still going to be using definition of momentum. So I do want mass times, I guess, average velocity because they are, they are stuck on average momentum. Uh, we are given mass. Um, uh, so it, instead of being given the velocity, we'll have to calculate the average velocity as the displacement divided by the, the duration of time. And um, while the question doesn't point it out, it's uh, useful to us that it's a 100 meter dash, which will likely take place on a straight uh, portion of the track. Because if the these vectors, they are significant. Um, these, so if uh, this is taking place on a curved track, then the curve will matter for average velocity calculation. So I'm glad it doesn't say, you know, uh, 800 meter, uh, 800 meter, uh, whatever. So that's the velo average velocity. I need to multiply that with the 67. 
of the 650 uh, point. So, so yeah, if this had been like a marathon, then um, the average momentum would be difficult to calculate without knowing the track and everything. Um, okay, let's keep going. Uh, one hazard of space travel is debris left by uh, previous missions. Yeah. More, more issue around the orbit. Um, yeah, there is some time. <laughs> there are far greater number. There is no attack. Uh, calculate the force exerted by uh, some small chip of paint. All right, I gotta label these things. I'm not gonna remember them all. Um, so some milligram. So I need to convert that to kilogram later. Uh, strikes a spacecraft window at a relative speed of that. Okay, that's a. Uh, my initial speed of some sort, given that the collision lasts this. Uh, express your answer. Uh, let me label the delta t notations and this. Okay, good. Um, so, so yeah, it's uh, saying, um, so we are going to be using this uh, definition here. Impulse is given by this, which is related change of momentum, because it looks like we are given all the quantities that we need for change of momentum. So we can turn this around to, to give an expression for force. And in fact, at this point in the semester, this is what we are going to consider to be definition of force. That it's the change of momentum, if it's the only force acting, so more like impulse, divided by duration of time. So in this setup, we have uh, something that we can write for change of momentum. It's going to be uh, the zero, that's the final momentum minus mass times initial velocity divided by duration of time. And uh, I think we only care about the absolute value, so I'm just not gonna worry about the sign. So it'll simply be uh, m the initial divided by duration of time. So let's do that. I'm just gonna do the uh, unit conversion in place, but I, let me just to justify the factors that I'll be using. So I'm going to be converting something that's in milligrams into, I want that in kilogram. So I'm multiplying it by factor of one to convert the unit. So I want milligram on the denominator, kilogram on the numerator. So that milligrams cancel, I get kilogram. Let's see, just thinking it through. One kilogram is a thousand grams. One gram is a thousand milligram. So this should be a million, 10 to the six milligram. Um, and I think everything else is already in basic SI unit. Yeah. So, um, so I have my mass, 0 0.07 milligram. So to convert it to kilogram, I divide by 10 to the power of six. So that's my mass times the velocity, 3.1 times 10 to the power of three. I'm using that E notation because Sage Math <laughs> recognizes that. Uh, divide by the amount of time, six times 10 to the power of minus eight. And the nice thing about this E notation is that like whether I have parentheses or not, doesn't matter. It takes precedence over all other notations because it's basically part of the number. All right, so that's, uh, oh, I, that, oh, sorry, uh, I don't know what, that's, um, I don't like it um, because, I mean, like, so it's not going to accept that this as a correct answer, and I think it should. Um, anyways, <laughs> let me keep going. Um, it's, I mean, you know, these uh, algorithmically graded things, they are already not as intuitive as human graders are. And I've seen people do this where the people's uh, first two wrong answers, you just miss the power of 10. And your subsequent updates get more crazy because you don't realize you just missed the power of 10. And um, it's like, I think that this algorithmically graded stuff should be as lenient as we can make it um, because it's already uh, not as good as human grader. Okay, the X component of a force on a some mass golf ball by a uh, seven hour, I don't care, <laughs> versus time is plotted. Okay, okay, I'm given force as a function of time. Okay, um, 
and it says find the x component of the impulse during the intervals. Ah, so, uh, so this is where we lean on this definition: impulse is a force times the duration of time. Now. We've been using this straight basically under the circumstances where either we had a constant force or we were dealing with the average of force. It looks like we have some portions of this that's not um, that. We have a force that's varying as a function of time. So in these circumstances, what we have to do is it's similar to what we did for variable force with the spring force. Uh, in the context of work and energy, we have to deal in terms of the infinitesimal amount of impulse delivered by the force over an infinitesimal amount of time. And we take the value of force at that exact time. Um, and as long as we make this interval small enough, we can treat force as being constant over that interval. So this is the valid formula for your infinitesimal impulse. Now, they aren't asking for infinitesimal impulse. They are asking for value of impulse over this uh, finite interval, zero to 50 milliseconds. So um, we need some way to add up these infinitesimal contributions. Um, so what I have here is basically what contribution due to one sliver here. They want the whole thing. Um, and the short answer there is, and we'll cover this before in lecture, you have to integrate over the whole interval. Um, that's uh, really the conceptual um, uh, meaning of integral. And um, and I always like to go through these steps first because you will find that whenever you encounter integrals in physics, the hardest thing isn't the integral. The integral is easy, simple. Uh, hardest part is uh, setting it up. And the thing that will help you set up the integral is the first thinking about the infinitesimal portion, the integrand. Uh, once you set up your integral with that, then what you get usually at our level will be pretty simple. So, um, but this integral, uh, you know, integral is the area under the curve. So that's what we are going to calculate. We're not going to bother with actually coming up with a functional form and <laughs> finding the antiderivative. Don't need that. That looks like a triangle. So let me find an area <laughs> of a triangle. And one thing that will help me is, so my units are in newtons and milliseconds on the graph. It looks like they are looking for newton times milliseconds on the answer. So I don't need to do, have to any unit conversion. So this is a triangle of base uh, 50, height 30. I know the formula for that. It's going to be one half uh, base 50 times height, 30 units. Uh, the way the question is worded, they all just work themselves out. So 750 Newton millisecond, that's what it is. The next 50 to 100, that's easier. Base is still 50, but it's now a rectangle. That can just do 50 times 30 or 1500 Newton millisecond. Okay, uh, and uh, the second part is uh, getting at what we talked about here. It's uh, uh, it's what the physical meaning or usefulness of impulse is. It gives you the change of momentum. So these answers are basically exactly that. Uh, as long as you're talking about, oh, wait, wait, but they went from Newton times a millisecond to basic SI unit. So I had to convert milliseconds to seconds. Um, so just uh, doing the unit conversion on the side quickly. So I have something that's in milliseconds. I want that in um, seconds. So what I'm multiplying here is millisecond on the bottom, second on top. I want this fr a fraction to be one. So one second is a thousand milliseconds. Okay, so divided by a thousand. I think I can do that in my head. Let's put a zero in front, uh, 1.5. Okay, so that's it. Uh, or at least that should be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's keep going. Okay. What is the average momentum of an avalanche that moves a forty centimeter thick layer? Uh, moves what? Uh, oh, so that's uh, what it's moving. Uh, okay. I think this is somehow gonna be. Uh, so let me just uh, start drawing pictures. So we have an avalanche. It's moving some snow. 
that has some height, that's the thickness of there. Um, over an area of um, that, okay. So it's from this I can calculate area. Um, so I think uh, we, it, that's supposed to give us a volume of the snow over a distance of one kilometer. Uh, okay, so it's gonna be moving one kilometer in time. Okay, I think I'm getting to hang of what it's asking. Delta X over some seconds. Uh, also more density of, uh, we properly haven't talked about density yet, um, but so, I mean, you know, if you've taken chemistry, you might have seen it, that's great. <laughs> we, we hold off until we cover fluids to really properly do density. Don't know why the textbook brings this up, but density uh, for which we use letter rho. This is a Greek letter. Um, my rho looks nothing like my P. My P looks like this, that's my rho. They are totally two different letters. They even have different number of strokes. Um, so density is defined as mass per volume. It's usually a property of a substance. Um, in, right now, it's a way for us to really give you the mass without giving you the mass because we are giving you the density and volume. So what we are telling you to do is, oh, multiply them because mass will be density times volume. So that's a, a, what we expect you to do. We'll do that. Um, so for momentum, uh, we need mass times velocity. Uh, let me do it this way. I think uh, I'm just gonna have uh, my quantities defined. <laughs> so for momentum, it's gonna be mass times velocity. And I'm just gonna put in a number. So for mass and velocity, based on those pieces of information I'm getting. So uh, for mass, I need the density. Uh, that's 350 kilogram per meter cube. That's basic SI unit. Uh, density times the volume. So it looks like I'm thinking of a, what's the word? Is it cuboid, uh, rectangular issue thing? So I just need you know area times height in basic SI unit. So 100 times 600 meters area times the height in meters, 0.4. So that gives me mass of the snow times, uh, sorry, not times, well, times is there. <laughs> I need to specify velocity. Uh, velocity will be uh, one kilometer, so that's thousand meters, divided by 5.5 seconds, or yeah, 5.5 seconds. Uh -huh. um, so substitute that in and I think that should be it. Uh, yeah. So I get, so this expression is 1.53 times 10 to the power of nine. Looks like I have times 10 to the power of nine already. So let me just put in 1.53. Oh, by the way, I just noticed uh, my audio is a little bit unusual. Let me just go back to what it normally is. Uh, the noise outside <laughs> reminded me. Um, I, I don't know if there's any change in the quality. I'll watch the recording later and see. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so this is just, you know, application of definition. It's just uh, having you find all these quantities that <laughs> doesn't really have a lot to do with the momentum, but, uh, you know, sometimes questions involve busy work, which has some point because oftentimes in real life, you're not given uh, all the quantities you need neatly. You have to calculate it yourself. You have to figure out how to find them. So uh, I think uh, even though it's a bit of a busy work, I, I think it's fine. It's, uh, there's a point to the busy work. <laughs> so, okay, uh, calculate the final velocity of some mass of rugby player who is initially running at that, but collides head on with a padded ball post at that part of, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> so let me just do this algebraically a little bit because they won't find all the last day, but they are going really roundabout way to tell us, give us information that we need. So we have the mass of the player. We have the initial velocity of the player. 
and we are given the force uh, for some duration of time. Okay. Um, so you could actually there are two ways to do this question. You could uh, figure out the acceleration of the player and do it using kinematics. That's perfectly fine. I don't think that's any more work than the route I will take. The route I will take since we are in the moment impulse and momentum chapter, we'll just uh, use what we have for impulse and momentum. So we have impulse. It looks like we are given all the information that we need for impulse. And impulse is has physical meaning as change of momentum or mass times velocity final minus mass times velocity initial. So when I look at this equation, uh, it looks like I have everything except for V final. So I'm just going to solve for V final. So V final is just dropping vector notations because uh, it's one dimensional. I'll just let the signs of the quantities indicate direction. So V final is, I move the V initial over and divide by M. <laughs> so I have V initial, I don't know why I wrote my V like here, V initial uh, plus F times delta T. So here's where you have to be a little bit careful while you are plugging in, oh wait, wait, uh, divide by n. <laughs> in addition to that, uh, here's what you have to be careful while you are plugging in numbers. It says experience is a backward force and that backwards part matters. So when I plug in the number for f, I'm gonna make sure that this is plugged in as a negative number. That's what I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna treat this as a vector quantity with the signs of the quantity. So um, my V final is going to be my V initial, uh, 8, plus my force minus 1.76 times 10 to the power of 4 times delta T, 5.5 times 10 to the power of minus 2, divided by mass, 114. And I'm making sure I plugged everything in, in a basic SI unit, uh, and I get, huh, minus 0 0.5 or 491. I have a suspicion that, yeah, they said the velocity. So I have a suspicion they are wanting to assign the quantity here because uh, I guess what it's trying to tell you is that there was so much force on the rugby player that he bounced off. He's not just coming to a stop. He's not slowing down. He's actually bouncing off. I think that's what it's trying to say. So let's give it a try. And yeah. I wonder what it will say if I um, if I didn't have a minus sign. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, if uh, you didn't realize that they were looking for a signed quantity, then <laughs> see if your negative sign in the answer is significant. It's in the sense of physical meaning. Uh, so okay, I think I got one more question. So let me just do that, and uh, that'll be this set of questions again. Um, so you know, seven kind of uh, medium to high difficulty question. I wouldn't do them, be able to do them in 25 minutes, but these are, because they are application of definition, it's relatively easy, although this one can be challenging. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm doing it, because not all, some of the questions were definitely easy, just plugging the numbers into formula, but this one uh, does require a little more um, thinking. So, um, says water from a fire hose is uh, directed for so there's my wall and it says i have some kind of fire hose that's firing water 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 uh, at a rate of so there's some kind of flow rate of um, 46 kilograms per second and they are coming out at speed of 45 meters per second. And we'll assume that as it's hitting the wall, it has that speed. Uh, calculate the force exerted on the wall, assuming the water's horizontal momentum is reduced to zero, instead of bouncing off. Um, yeah, okay. So now, if uh, as you're looking at it, you are at a pause <laughs> because uh, um, 
it, you don't have all the traditional quantities you would be given if you were um, asked to calculate force, like uh, mass and acceleration, that sort of stuff. Um, so this is where our new definition of force is useful. And I think uh, writing it out, we can kind of get a sense of um, how to make use of the information that's given here. So let me write out the definition of force. Uh, that's a change of momentum, uh, which op applies if uh, there's only one force and that one force is responsible for change of momentum divided by the duration of time. Okay, um, and it looks so superficially that the question is giving us some kind of mass quantity and some kind of speed quantity that uh, allows to calculate change of momentum. The only challenge is that it's got these uh, time elements to it that's uh, annoying. <laughs> so when you have a situation like this, this is what I would uh, recommend that you give it a try. Imagine what happens for some unit time. So even though you are not given delta t, imagine uh, you have some time delta t. And uh, so here I'm going to do it uh, symbolically, but you could even imagine delta t is equal to something like one second. Um, if somehow it turned out to be a quantity that cancels out, that it won't matter that you plugged in some number as long as it wasn't zero. And um, if it's a quantity that doesn't cancel out, then you know then it's a more difficult question. Um, so, so we're going to assume that we have some amount of time delta t. And let's see what happens under that. So I can calculate the um, um, the change of momentum over that delta t, because I will have amount of mass of water that's come out and hit the wall. That'll be the the rate, flow rate. Uh, let me call this, I don't know, L. That'll be L times delta t. Um, and we are given the velocity. So, okay, I think I have enough to write down my change of momentum. That'll be the mass. L times delta T times the change of velocity, which is the initial, let me do absolute value. As an absolute value, unsigned quantity is gonna be V initial minus V final, uh, which is zero. So V initial, is just the initial velocity. Uh, so that's change of momentum over that duration of time. I'm, for the calculation of force, I'm dividing out that delta T Hey, they cancel. So all I have to do is flow rate times my initial velocity, and that'll give me the um, that'll give me the force uh, due to the water on the wall. So forty-six times forty-five, twenty-seven, and the. Uh, you can, if you work out the units, you can see that it works out to be correct units. Kilograms per second times meters per second is kilogram times meter per second squared, which is unit of Newton. So uh, I won't uh, make the claim that if units work out, it'll always work out because that's not always the case. But if you need to work out, there's some, there's a chance that it, um, um, even if you didn't go through all of this reasoning, that somehow that combination wasn't entirely meaningless. Um, that's one of the reasons we physicists like to pay attention to units. Because sometimes they reveal some relationship that might not have been obvious. Okay, so I think that's all seven questions. Seven in 30 minutes, I guess that's not too bad. Um, yeah, let me just make sure I did that. Yeah, good. Um,